Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to review another ICO, but first I want to clarify that just like the rest of my content besides interviews, these ICO videos are not sponsored content. I'm receiving no reimbursement from anyone for making these videos, and I wanted to clarify because I have been getting questions for good reason. It's totally fair that you guys want to ask me, but I just want to make sure that everybody knows that this is not paid for. Quick shout out to everyone who's been liking, subscribing, and sharing my content. You guys are the best. If you like my t-shirt and you want to get one, you can pick one up on my website, cryptocandor.com backslash merch. And if you want to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon. All the links will be down below. My normal disclaimer, this project is an ICO, so it's still very much in development. Please always do your own research. As usual, I am not a financial advisor. All investments have inherent risk, and my videos are for entertainment purposes only. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I put out content pretty frequently, and I'd hate for you guys to miss out. Let's get into it. What is DXChain? DXChain is the world's first decentralized big data and machine learning network built on the blockchain. In other words, DXChain aims to design a platform to solve the problems of computation of big data in a decentralized manner. In 2017, data surpassed oil as being the most sought after commodity. And because of that, it's honestly no surprise that the importance of controlling your own data has found its way into the blockchain tech. Currently, only big companies have the capability to run these big data tasks, because not only can these companies afford the very expensive hardware, but these companies also own most of the existing consumer data. DXChain is designed to serve as a data trading platform to give power back to the users. So what's big data then? It's extremely large data sets that are usually related to human behavior and interactions. Nowadays, almost every action we take leaves a digital trail. We generate data whenever we go online, when we carry our smartphones around with us, when we communicate with our friends through social media or chat applications, and when we shop. The majority of what we do leaves some sort of digital footprint, and that footprint is very valuable data. The term big data refers to the collection of all of this data and our ability to have it analyzed computationally to reveal patterns, trends, and associations which give people and businesses advantages over a wide range of areas. All right, let's go over the team. Alan Zhang is one of the co-founders of DX Chain. He's an expert in blockchain tech and network security. He has a BA in information management, and he's the founder and CEO at Trustlook AI Cybersecurity, and is a self-proclaimed serial entrepreneur. Wei Wang is the co-founder and CTO. He's an MS from Columbia University and the University of Pittsburgh. He was the principal scientist at AT&T on research related to blockchain technology, and he's the principal scientist at Hortonworks Research on big data and artificial intelligence. James Lee is also the co-founder. He's experienced in blockchain systems design and architecture. He was a tripwire principal security architect with 10 plus years of experience in network security overall. Okay, so up next are the details of the ICO. DXChain is running their ICO on the Ethereum network and will be ongoing sometime this month, which is in July. The team states their exchange listings will be shortly after their ICO is completed. Their funding goal is 17.2 million. 30% of their total 100 billion token supply will be available for the token sale. There will be a one year token lockup for this ICO. Participants will receive 25% of the token prior to it being listed on an exchange, 25% three months after the listing, and then in increments of 25% every three months until it's all distributed. They have a soft cap of 8,000 ETH and a hard cap of 16,000 ETH. On to the technology. The purpose of their DX token is for utility and for fuel. It will be the fuel for the cost of transactions, storage, and for using computational power within the network. It will also be an incentivized reward for those users who are providing storage to the ecosystem and giving computational power. DX chain is combining the way Hadoop is solving distributed storage of data within an organization, but on the blockchain. Let me back up a little. I just mentioned DX chain is using concepts similar to Hadoop. Prior to making this video, I'd never heard of this before, so I did a little Googling. Hadoop is an open source distributed framework that manages data processing and storage for big data applications. It is currently at the center of a growing ecosystem of big data technologies and is used to support the processing of data in an advanced way, including predictive analysis, data mining, and machine learning applications. Today, it's the most widely used system for providing data storage and processing because it's a relatively inexpensive, off-the-shelf solution opposed to the traditional expensive systems. The takeaway from this explanation is that although it's confusing to wrap your head around, it is the best way to handle big data right now, and DXChain wants to bring that to the blockchain. DXChain has a few components that make up the project. They will be utilizing a multi-chain structure, the first which is their master chain. This stores asset information such as states, transactions, receipts, and contracts. It is in charge of providing transaction-related operations while coordinating with the other two chains. This chain will utilize proof of work as its consensus protocol because it requires the highest level of security and stability. Next is the data chain, which is built on a peer-to-peer -peer file storage system and stores all of the non-asset data. It is responsible for providing and settling big data storage, handling privacy issues, and providing support to the computational chain. It's going to utilize proof of space time or P 
TOST to verify the processes. What is proof of space time? This is consensus protocol that allows the prover to convince a verifier that he or she has spent space time as a resource. This would be defined as someone storing data or using space over a period of time. A paper I found online defined POST as the trade-off between CPU work and space time. Compared to proof of work, POST requires less energy to be used and the difficulty can be increased by extending the time period over which the data has been stored without increasing computational costs. Another project that actually utilizes this consensus protocol is Filecoin. And the last major component of DX Chain is the computation chain, which supports specific computing tasks on the DX Chain virtual machine. Unlike the hash mining of Bitcoin, this sidechain is designed for useful work to solve real world business problems and support the specific computing tasks required by the DX Chain ecosystem. The computation chain's validation uses something they call provable data computation, or PDC. Basically, this allows them to frequently, efficiently, and securely verify that a storage server is faithfully storing its clients, potentially very large, outsourced data. So how will DX chain work? Well, a client will assign a job to the master chain, which would then be forwarded to the computation chain. The computation chain will receive the data from the data chain and that it has access to, run our required computation and execute the tasks. The computing chain will then write the results into the data chain and inform the master chain that the job is complete. All the participating nodes will receive rewards for providing computational power and storage power. What are some use cases? In the medical field, research institutes and pharmaceutical companies need patient data to conduct research. Sharing patient data is often challenging due to privacy concerns, making the research process difficult and slow. Not to mention the patients typically don't benefit from using their own data. The exchange could allow storage, computation, and the exchange of the patient's data in a secure and private way, all on the blockchain. And patients would also be compensated for their data being utilized. On other partnerships. So Trustlook AI Cybersecurity has said that they will be using DX Chain. Important to mention that this company also belongs to one of the co-founders of DX Chain. As far as investors go, they have a very long list, which I won't go through, but as you can see by the image next to me, I don't know which side it's gonna be on, it's pretty vast. If you're interested in reading more about that, you can check it out on their website. Who are their competitors? In the transaction space, they have a lot of competitors focused on increasing transaction speeds, such as Quarkchain and Zillica, to name the bigger, you know, more newer ones. In the shared computing space, they're up against Gollum and Anchor. In the shared storage space, they're battling Filecoin and storage. DXChain's advantage is to tackle transaction, storage, and computation simultaneously so the blockchain technology can expand its capabilities in big data and machine learning, and thereby providing more values to businesses and consumers. What's coming up that we have to look forward to? Well, DX's test chain is still in development process. Their ICO is supposed to begin in August of this year, and by Q3 of this year, they're hoping to launch their network beta. Final thoughts. Although they have a lot of competitors, the exchange structure is innovative and unlike a lot of the rest of the projects out there. It could be a breakthrough by allowing blockchains to have big data and machine learning capabilities. It's also backed by a large amount of VCs who will bring in more partnerships and opportunities for DX Chain. That being said, they have a long roadmap. It's estimating that all the components of the project will be live Q4 of 2019. And the company doesn't have other major partnerships besides its co-founders company. I also think for the average person, this project in itself and the white paper are a little heavy to get through and it may be a deterrent for the non-tech savvy person. That's not to say that the project won't be successful and that's also not to say that I'm tech savvy, but I will say it was a, a harder project to review. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for me today. Thank you for watching and thank you all for the support as usual and I will see you all soon.